Uh, hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, let us look at an interesting Indian company called Fine Organic Industries. So, Fine Organic Industries is a specialty chemical company which was founded in the year 1970 by Mr. Ramesh Shah and Mr. Prakash Kamath. The company manufactures various types of additives which have varied applications in diverse uh, industries such as plastics, rubbers, pharma, etc. The company uh, has expertise in oleochemistry, which means uh, the additives manufactured from by this company are primarily derived from plant-based sources and natural fats. Uh, so, uh, apart from the oleochemicals, there are also petrochemicals, which uh, find applications in these industries. But overall, uh, over the last few years, there has been a trend towards using plant-based additives. The company also offers more than 400 products uh, to 700 plus direct customers. The large, uh, this is a, a largest producer of oleochemical based uh, additives in India and is a significant player globally. Uh, other oleochemical based companies in India include uh, Camlin Fine Sciences, uh, Fair Chem, uh, uh, which was earlier uh, uh, acquired by Prem Watsa. So moving on, uh, this is a 50 year journey from the uh, in latest investor pre uh, presentation. So since the chart was already uh, readily available in a very good form, I decided to directly use it. So as you can see that uh, the company has ha had a very uh, a formidable journey from the start uh, in 1970. So let us see uh, in the lead uh, in the recent times uh, in 2015, there has been an additional uh, capacity expansion at Ambarnath uh, facility. And uh, there, there is also a new plant commissioned at Ambarnath, which has already been opened actually as of uh, today. So the IPO of this company came up, uh, came in um, 2018. I think I remember the share price was around uh, 780, 790 rupees. So moving on. Uh, so what are the major products of this company? So major products form um, uh, like uh, food additives, polymer additives, rubber additives and uh, specialty additives and feed nutrition additives and emollients for cosmetics. These are all the various uh, types of products uh, offered by the customers uh, to the by the company to its customers. So one thing we should understand here is this company is a B2B company, which means it supplies uh, these additives to other uh, corporations. So they may not be directly, um, it's it's not a direct B2C company. That means it doesn't find uh, a small bakery might not be using an additive from fine organic industries. Uh, but a large baker, uh, which is based out of Europe, could be using uh, fine organic industries products. So moving on. Uh, so let us look at the current facilities and operational overview of this uh, business. So uh, there are four facilities of this company currently, which are operational. So there are two facilities in Ambarnath. So one was already there and the second one at the Ambarnath is the most recent one, uh, which was completed in the year uh, June 2019. And then there are other facilities at Badlapur and Dombivali. Uh, and there is also a, an expansion project going on at Patal Ganga and construction activities have already begun. So this facility is expected to be dedicated only for uh, food based additives, food additives. And the company also has a, a, a dedicated lab uh, with 18 scientists and, a, and the number of uh, permanent employees is around 700 as per the latest annual report. So moving on, uh, let's get into the details of the major uh, products of this uh, company. Uh, so broadly, uh, food additives and plastic additives are the major products of the company. So as we can understand, the food additives can be emulsifiers, antifungal additives, preservatives. Uh, so some people also refer to them as shelf life extension products. Uh, so that's a new, uh, new uh, uh, phrase for preservatives. The primary application is in the bakeries, uh, baker, baking industry and the packaged food industry. Uh, move, and also uh, things like ice cream, uh, all these uh, tend to use uh, food additives. So the bet higher, better quality food additives, uh, food additives are preferred by uh, leading multinational companies uh, today. And coming to plastic additives, uh, there can be varied applications. So I've just given an example here, uh, which is uh, from the company's uh, annual report. Uh, so moving on, so there are other uh, specialty additives such as um, lube additives, feed nutrition additives, cosmetics uh, additives, uh, which are like primarily used in creams, lotions, etc. And then there are additives for coatings. Uh, so coatings also need emulsifiers, uh, deformers, wetting agents, etc. 
so the company all manufactures all sorts of things and uh, the what the C, the cagr which you see here on this chart is the indicative india expected growth in india it's not the cagr of the company for this product but it's the uh, industry cagr expected basically so we can see that there is a trend towards these type of additives uh, like if you can uh, read the line below the feed nutrition there is a glow, growing health awareness and food processing industry safe for milk and milk products so they would try to use plant based additives wherever possible uh, the good companies the reputed companies which don't want to uh, use any harmful chemicals so moving on uh, so the list of key companies uh, globally uh, in this industry include uh, companies like kerry group danisco so the company claims to be one of the global uh, player with uh, no similar peers in the indian markets so the, the as i told earlier there are chemical companies like uh, camlin fine sciences uh, fair chem specialty chemicals and i think there could be many other uh, companies in india which manufacture these products but uh, one thing which i could note was the significant difference in the operating margin of this company that is fine organics and the other companies which in india so the difference is almost like 10% so probably there is some some kind of a um, truth in what the company says that there is no particular peer in the indian markets so moving on uh, if we go to the financials and stock price we can see that the ttm revenues were about 1000 crores and the operating margins are healthy at uh, 23% uh, overall the balance sheet is healthy with some cash uh, cash and cash equivalents i would say the company is almost like net debt free uh, though there is debt on the balance sheet but there is uh, enough cash and cash equivalent to cover that debt and the return on capital has been in excess of 25 30% over the last few years uh, and company is investing in new facilities and this has reduced the free cash flows uh, despite uh, healthy operating cash flows over the last few years so currently uh, it trades about um, at a price of about 2500 uh, uh, which translates into a market cap of 7 7800 crores so this would uh, effectively mean that there's a price to earnings multiple of about 50 Uh, which doesn't look uh, too cheap or there is uh, doesn't look like there is enough margin on safety in the price so moving on to the shareholding pattern so this is somewhat interesting because the promoter shareholding is very high uh, which is about 75% and there is about 13% uh, held by domestic mutual funds uh, the fpi is foreign uh, professional investors hold about 6% so you can understand that overall free float which trades on a low uh, on a daily basis is very low so this could uh, uh, mean the recent run up i mean this could be the reason behind the recent run up in the stock prices um, and the company had an operating cash flow of about 218 crores so if we can see the uh, share price chart uh, you can understand that uh, there has been a good run up in the recent times so where the uh, stock price moved above 3200 3300 and now it has kind of um, settled down at around 2500 level so it would be interesting to see where this uh, the stock price moves but uh, i would say the business is quite healthy and yeah of course the the risk about the price is there but uh, apart from that the business uh, quality is pretty good so we can look at the strengths of the business in this slide so this is a quality franchise with management uh, who have decades of experience in the same industry and there is a secular trend uh, of uh, movement from petrochemical additives to oleochemical additives or plant based additives uh, the company um, seems to have a diverse uh, diversified product portfolio with a large number of customers and uh, there are, uh, there could be high barriers to entry in certain products but i wouldn't say that uh, it is very high in all the products so most uh, uh, i would say any company uh, it might have some products which are uh, uh, where the barriers to entry is very high but there are some products where it could be uh, uh, not too high actually so uh, moving on there are uh, um, the high mar- the high margins uh, if sustained uh, this could improve the financials uh, the, and one more thing which we could un- uh, we can understand is additive cost is in the in an end product is a minuscule percent so the business enjoys a uh, an inherent stickiness uh, the and also the long term supply contracts are pre- prevalent in the additives industry so this uh, means that it may be uh, immune to short term volat- volatility so what could ro- go wrong uh, so some things which can go wrong are the valuation risk and uh, uh, the trend towards lower plastic consumption could also reduce the plastic additive business 
and the overall uh, industry slowdown could affect the business so lack of uh, revenue growth could uh, uh, would be uh, difficult to justify the current uh, valuations and also the company doesn't uh, reveal as to uh, what percentage of revenues are uh, derived from various additives so this is something which we will not be uh, knowing or we cannot uh, understand also the customer concentration uh, risk is unknown at this point uh, so hope you found this um, uh, presentation useful uh, and i would try to add more information or come up with a second presentation if i uh, if i am able to get more details around this company thank you